Alrighty, well, hi everybody, and it's cast time once again. Um, and this one here is going to be a little bit early. Um, it's 10.53 p.m. right now. Normally I like to do these around 11 to 11.30, but I figured since, since I pretty much have everything set the way I want, I think, um, I, I just figured just go with what I got, so. But, uh, uh, for the, for the music, um, it, hard as hell to read. Um, it's Madrigals and Frostguard, uh, even fall over Aaron Galen or something like that, but, yeah, it was it wasn't my first choice. I think there was, um, I think there was, like, one other album, uh, one other candidate. Um, I just basically flipped a coin in my mind and went with this one, but both of them aren't really that great. They're, it's Dungeon Synth, but, um, they're, they're fairly heavily on the repetitious side, so, yeah. But anyway, let me go ahead and get that going. Did it? Okay, I'm checking something here real quick. Okay. Okay, so to start with, um, well, uh, um, like yesterday, it was another five hour stream. Uh, went pretty good. Um, I just uh, did my usual idle game tour. Started with uh, idling to roll the gods. Uh, played that for like about 45 minutes. Um, hopped on over to idle research. Um, I think uh, I think I was on that one for, for about 15, 30 minutes. Um, but like I like I said yesterday, there's a I unlocked an additional boat on there. So just been doing just been uh, working that a little more. Just been uh, working on that a little more. Um, but yeah, and I got pretty well established in that game. So after those two, um, I decided to go ahead and hop on over to my quickie stuff. And I, my headphones are... Holy... Well, the volume wasn't jacked up to the max, but it sure sounded like it. But yeah, I had, to, I had to turn it down from my end. So, but anyway... But yeah, and then after that, um, I just did a bunch of my quickie dicky idle games. The kind where I, I kind of want to chalk it up to poor design. But these are also very old idle games. They're like one of the first ones that came out. So they don't have the kind of features or quality of life stuff that we have now. Um, I think I started with a uh, cookie clicker. <laughs> I don't think I upgraded. A, I don't think I upgraded a single thing on that. I think I literally, literally, that game probably lasted about five minutes, tops. Um, hopped on over, so, so hopped on over to Adventure Capitalist. Um, more or less the same. I was on there about five minutes. And keep in mind too, these are, uh, these are games that I very rarely uh, check on. I think last time I checked on these two was probably, wow, at least six months ago. So yeah, like I said, these I I kinda I kinda chalk it up to poor design. I mean, once you get once you hit your wall, that's it. You know, check back, you know, check back every six months. Um Realm Grinder. Now when I got on it, uh, again, I haven't played it in a very long time, and like a lot like the uh, other two idle games, once you get to that wall, uh you're pretty much stuck and then I think I also remember about Realm Grinder 2 um, getting back or getting back to your to your last wall it actually takes quite a bit of work because there's a lot there's a there's there's like a how can I put this there's kind of a kind of an energy bar or in the game it's called mana but it's kind of a it's like this energy bar system. You can, you can cast, you can, oh, you can passively, actively cast spells. I'm sorry if that doesn't make any sense, but um, when you first get the spell system, you have to manually click the spells in whatever order you want to do them in and all that. Um, it won't be until like sometime later when you can uh, have it set to do this automatically, because 
I mean, there's, I mean, there's a fair amount of uh, active abilities, aka spells, in this game that you can click. Um, some of these you actually wanna, you wanna use together. Uh, some of them you don't want it, you don't want to use together, cause they'll, they'll contradict each other. But you, you kind of get the idea. But like I said, when you first start playing this game, you have to click these uh, spells manually. Eventually, you kind of do it automatically. But uh, believe it or not, that actually takes a lot of work. Because uh, you can uh, you can set your spells to say, go off when you have this much mana. Like, it, it's like that. It's like an exact science. So, but like I said, getting to your next wall is going to take a long time because uh, you got to go through and you got to reconfigure your spells. You got to, you know, set up what spell goes off when and all that. So, there's a fair amount of micromanaging involved. So I think it's probably one of the biggest reasons why in Realm Grainer I can I can ascend and push that wall farther back, but again, that's gonna basically I have to do the bullshit all over again. So I think that was probably one of the reasons why I I seldom have ever played a Realm Grinder. So and then um after that, but again, Realm Grinder this time around. I think I was on it for about five or so minutes. Shifted on over to Clicker Heroes. Now, Clicker Heroes is pretty much a quickie idle game like the other three that I mentioned, although not as much. Um, you'll, uh, there's a, there's a wall that you have to get past, but uh, it's actually a, a, a fairly thick wall. Uh, I, I, I don't want to I don't want to fire up the game but um it it progresses it progresses just like any other idle game it's okay I, this is what I was trying to say it's actually one of the better one of the better idle games to be sure um you'll be uh you'll get yourself to a wall then ascend and your next run will carry a little farther will push that wall farther back and you keep doing this over and over and you'll and eventually you're gonna there's gonna be you're gonna you're gonna push progress to a point where you're gonna come across this really thick wall like it's gonna take you an incredibly long time like you once you once you unlock this this one hero the next hero after that is gonna be this thick wall you gotta you had to have progressed big time so Getting to this thick wall in the grand scheme of things isn't that difficult. It's just breaking through that super thick wall is what's going to take forever. So when that happens, that's when I play Clicker Heroes less. So. And this game here also has a double ascension mechanic. It's a, it's a two-tiered ascension system. I don't want to go into it right now, but basically what you'll do is you'll get to this thick wall you'll get there quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker and when it gets to a point where you're at that thick wall almost just like that you'll you'll do your second tier ascension which also resets all your previous ascensions meaning you literally start over but you have a bunch of uh second ascent or second tier buffs that you now have but you, you kind of get the idea but it it's you're gonna have the same problems that you're that I just mentioned with the other three, but it's not as severe. So, but a clicker hero, so it's still gonna be the kind of game that I'm probably not gonna play that much. So, now, um, Trimps, on the other hand, the one I played after these uh, previous four, um, it's same. There, um, you can ascend, and I gotta look at something. Okay. Yeah, I better loop the album. I got a feeling this is gonna be a while. It's almost ten minutes now, and I'm not even fat. I'm not even past uh, part one. So, but anyway, um, Trimps also has an ascension system. But um, and I've said this yesterday too. There's, there's a, oh, I mean, there's. There's, there's these, uh, there's a lot of walls in this game, 
but they're all they're they're basically speed bumps because trips operates on a cap all your resources that you use have a cap which can be upgraded and uh you can up you can um getting the up getting uh, upgrades aka buildings that are required to increase the to increase the resource caps they're actually a pain in the butt to get at first but eventually it'll get to a point where um the walls are going to be so how can I put this but yeah it could be one of those games where you could almost just check back once per day so so there's it's almost like the the um the other four games I mentioned, but again, not as bad. Because again, once you've uh, up, once you've uh, upgraded these buildings to a point where you only have you only have to check back like maybe once a day. But but again, it's again it's not as bad as the previous four. But it's it's one of those fire and forget games. Go in, check your progress, um, buy whatever whatever upgrade you need to, and then just go ahead and take off save your progress and just leave and come back tomorrow so it's it's a once per day thing so, and then um after that um i fired up grim clicker um and i actually totally completely forgot to play this game yesterday so it just totally slipped my mind but um now grim clicker despite it being a pretty graphics intensive game um it's actually a pretty uh it's a pretty active one So, uh, and, uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's walls you have to break through, but you can, uh, you can break through those walls fairly easily. Um, and then, um, and then kind of like Clicker Heroes, Grim Clicker, it kind of has a double ascension, a two-tiered ascension system. Like, you'll, you'll start the game on your current planet, but, um, uh, I think the term the term they use is called a shard, but uh, I'll I'll probably just call it a galaxy. It just it 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 it, uh, it feels right just to call it a galaxy. But anyway, once you've uh, once you've progressed enough on your current planet, then and again you are you are ascending you are ascending within this twin ascensions within this planet, but. Once you've gotten to a point where you can easily clear this planet just like that, then you can go ahead and, um... Hang on. I'll just say you could, um... You can shift to a different galaxy. Okay, maybe that's not the right word. Maybe... I'll just, I'll just use planets. Yeah. Planets does sound better. Sound better. Um, but once you've, uh... Once you're easily able to clear this one planet, then you can do your, you know, your second tier ascension into the next planet and again everything starts all over and you get a bump so but again overall um aside from the fact that like i said it is more graphics intensive it's uh and it's actually one of the better idle games i mean and it came out fairly recent so so they did more you know better quality of life they have a better understanding on how idle games should work. So, once again, you know, like the last four, it's not a serious knock on them, but, I mean, the last four I mentioned are, they're pretty old. Like, they all came out in, like, the 2010s. So. And then I capped it off with Idle Champs. My, my, uh, my current favorite idle game. But just like Grim Clicker, it's a pretty graphics-intensive one, and I've said this in probably a lot of my other casts, uh, and there's also this chance that it crashes my computer. And for the past week, week and a half, I've been lucky. It started up just like that. So. Okay, and headphones gotta come off. So they're already cutting in and out. So I gotta be able to concentrate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some water real quick. So anyway, um, yeah, Idle Champs, um, 
I forgot, but, uh, I think I mentioned this yesterday. Yesterday, um, I unlocked a champion named Azaka. Um, I didn't really get much of a chance to try her out today. Uh, because by the time I actually even got to Idol Champs, I think I had a shutdown about an hour. About an hour after all. Yeah, I think it was like 5 p.m. And in case I forgot to mention earlier, this was another five-hour stream. So I think I started it all. So kind of, I, I should have said this. I probably should have said this sooner. Apologies. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I laid down around 4 a.m. A few minutes later, I woke up around 11.30 a.m. So yeah, got some good sleep. Um, tossed and turned for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Um, and just figured, what the hell, why not? Just go ahead and get an early stream going. I think I started around... I want to say around... Oh yeah, I think I started around 1 p.m. So, 1 p.m. And then my stream around 6. 6 p.m., so... But anyway, uh, by the time I got to Idol Champs, it was like 5 p.m. So I was already having to shut down about an hour later anyway. So, uh, but otherwise, I think, um, yeah, I just cleared out some quests. Um, move forward in the storyline. It's like the story that never ends. It's like you think you're done with one, another one takes its place, but... But yeah, and then and then like I've been doing throughout the throughout the times I've been playing idle games, I've been having some music going, I had and some podcasts. Uh, I had a I think I started with um started with some started with some ambient music. Uh, it just there's a there's a new there's a channel. It pops in from time to time called Siberian Ambience. Well they started putting out some new albums. Uh, just listen to them not for very long though I'd probably say about a half hour at the most uh, it just I just wasn't feeling it and then uh, some Doomer music I'm starting to get back into that now uh, Russian Doomer music um, and then I think after that I just started listening started checking out some podcasts uh, another one I I might have to dig a little bit deeper, but it's called Castle Super Beast. Um, it's it's a podcast run by a fighting game legend, Wooly. Uh, he's he started out with uh, Super Best Friends play. If you or if you've ever heard of it, uh, Friday Night Fisticuffs. It's every Friday he brings some friends over and they broadcast themselves playing fighting games, and then the day after they have what's called Saturday Morning Scrub Lords, where they take a bunch of these shitty fighting games, or these really obscure ones, uh, bring some friends over, and they'll broadcast themselves playing these. But yeah, uh, he's he, he came out with a podcast recently called Castle Super Beast. Now, from time to time, I'll um, I'll listen to like one or two of them. Um, but I I still have yet to see. I don't think I've ever seen a full a full blown podcast on YouTube. Um, I think if they ever do, though, I, I I might start checking them out when I stream these games. But yeah, I, it's just a matter of me remembering to actually go into the channel and see if they, see if they have any full-blown ones. Or, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, maybe I can do this really quick. I don't want to take too long. I'm on Twitch. Um, I'm on the channel. And yeah, they have full... They've got full-blown podcasts on Twitch, but apparently not on YouTube, so I'll have to remember that for next time. So anyway, um, I think I watched one of their, um, one of their podcast clips, and then um, just totally on a whim... I actually had it in my uh, watch later playlist for the past few days, wanting to want to actually play it when streaming. Um, it just popped up in my YouTube recommendations. It was one of Malcolm X's speeches. Um, gave that a check. That out. Um, both good and bad. 
Um, good because, hey man, it's fucking Malcolm X. Um, bad because what I, apparently what they were showing was the edited version. Like they're editing out whole chunks of the speech. I mean, come on, man, it's fucking Malcolm X. I want to listen to everything. I mean, I want to listen to everything this guy has to say. I don't want to hear just whatever you want me to hear. I'm going to take another drink of water. And then, um, and then on top of that too, and one of the, one of the big, one of the big uh, head scratchers that I've had in my life, this shit's copyrighted. I didn't know that. I just after the stream was over, I was gonna, you know, um, I was gonna link my stream vid on my uh, Lodestone blog post, and it's like most, if not all, of that speech that I played was all muted due to copyright. Like really? I mean, that's pretty. It's pretty rare though, cause. Usually, um, usually it's the music that's copyrighted. Hardly ever, um, anything outside of that gets muted. But no, uh, apparently, uh, Malcolm X's speech is copyrighted. So, who would have thunk it? So, but, I mean, otherwise, the stuff I did, the stuff, um, uh, the stuff that I did listen to was good shit, like you'd expect. So, and I gotta look at something. Okay, it's just going to the next track. So, but, but after that, I think I tried, uh, I tried checking out a few videos or podcasts. They weren't working out for one reason or another. Um, uh, Idol, the, uh, Idol Champs, the, the actual Twitch channel, they usually put all, um, live streams and their own podcasts and stuff. They didn't have anything today, so I'm trying to find something else. No luck. So I just uh, I just went ahead and fired up Cryo Chamber, which is also one of my favorite channels. They play uh, dark ambient music. Uh, but on the down on the downside though, most of that stuff is copyrighted, so um, I can't. I couldn't use any of that music in any of these cast videos otherwise. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, hell yeah, I would love to have their, uh, their, uh, their dark ambient live streams going on in these cast videos. But like I said, it's all, it's, most of it's copyrighted, so I ain't gonna risk it. So, but otherwise, yeah, that, great session today. You know, despite its, uh, drawbacks here and there, still a good one. Otherwise, that'll do her on that. Um, and then pinball, and this time, this time around, I tried firing up FX3, and today, with today, got lucky. It didn't didn't crash before it got to the title screen. It didn't. In fact, it didn't crash at all. In fact, uh, I did my uh, weekly matchup league. I think uh, I think I was one for one. Uh, one one lost one. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think I almost beat the high score on the uh, Star Wars droids table. I got real close, but came up short. Uh, Funhouse. Funhouse was, I think it was the opposite. I think I, I beat the high score long before the uh, three-minute time limit was up. So, yeah. And then, uh, Pinball Arcade, um, it didn't crash. Um kind of a really weird wonky session I I couldn't put my finger on it I just I want to say the motivation wasn't there um I got about I think it was like 15 20 minutes in um I most certainly didn't do great but I wasn't like total dog shit either I guess below average but uh at some point I mean, at some point, after about 20 minutes in, I just, I just didn't feel like playing any further. Uh, something in me just went, fuck it. So I just ended up bailing the session. But um, I did, uh, in fact, I think uh, I fired up my uh, Windows Movie Maker. Oh, it was something I had just now thought of. Um, after I make a video, copy it. Make a copy of it, you know, kind of a backup. It, it, it just now occurred to me. I just, I never thought of that until now. But I think part of that too is, uh, um, 
it probably slipped my mind because some of these videos that I make are freaking huge. They're like in the gigabytes. So, having to try to make a copy of something, uh, I might end up having to sit there and wait a while just for that, you know, copy to be made because there's a lot. But, anyway, um, just went ahead and made a copy. Copy of it in case anything goes wrong. Fired up my Windows Movie Maker. It seemed to work. Um, one thing I... I'll try to try to be brief about this, but uh, I found out that on Windows Movie Maker you can change the uh, you can change the actual uh, video quality. Like when you save it, when you save it, you can um, alter the uh, quality that it saves at. Um, I actually out uh, one time I actually cranked it up, like you know best quality possible. It actually took a lot. It took a lot longer to save it. Than it did to actually record it so but yeah but, but kind of getting back to what i was trying to talk about um i went ahead and edited it um just added a thing or two here and there um saved it it seemed to work like movie maker didn't crash my computer and i just figured what the hell just go ahead and upload it to youtube that on that um and then um another uh another alpha beta gamer video came out uh he was when i was watching the uh when i was watching part of the gameplay video yesterday he actually uh, mentioned something about this like uh he had a he had like the final chapter on some other video someplace i was wanting to check it out, but I got distracted by something else, but no big deal. Uh, he actually posted up the, uh, the last chapter today. So, yeah, definitely checked it out. And, um, he wasn't lying. Yeah, it... It said there in the title, the gory finale. Yeah, I... I mean... I mean, not, a, I mean, not enough... Not really enough for me to go, Oh my God! Gross! Um, you know... I mean, not, nothing really... I mean nothing that sickening but I could probably but I could easily see why uh, other people would have would have uh, cringed in horror at this stuff because yeah it was because yeah it was pretty it was pretty gory once again he he didn't disappoint for lack of a better word um as far as the story goes I think this is probably another one of the reasons why I kind of like this game they didn't they didn't shove the lore into your face, unlike a lot of other games. You know, at the you know you you start up a new game. Once upon a time, in a land far away, the area was beset by an evil tyrant and his evil minions. You know, you know, exposition. I think it's called. You know, you're not you're not getting you're not getting bits of story. You're not getting exposition everywhere you go. There, it's not all over the place. In this game here. It's it's like the other end of the spectrum. They don't tell you anything. You just you just wake up in this is this HR Gigaresque universe, and you just you're you're left to your own devices to figure out where to go from there. So like it's this game here. It's like a refreshing change of pace from well, you know from what I'm used to. Now, I'm gonna take another drink of water. Oh, yeah, but anyway, um, watch the rest of this. Um, but yeah, the, the story, they don't, there's no exposition. There's no storytelling per se in this game. You, you got to figure it out on your own, which, again, I actually kind of like. It's, it's a nice change from all the other games I've seen. Um, secondly, I think... I want to say the game Mirror's Edge is another example of this. It's a it's a first-person game, but unlike other unlike a lot of other first-person games, they uh, 
they are they are strictly first person. You see, in some of these other first person games, sometimes the camera will pan away from you, like to to show what happened here and stuff like that, and then whoop, right back in the first view or first person view, and then on other times, whoop, like if something happens to you, the camera whoop, veers away from you so you can see what's going on, that kind of thing. Not in this game. So sometimes you have to actually guess as to what's going on with you. What's going on with your body, you know, like a you know, if a if a big paras if a if a big parasite's feasting on your flesh or something, you only see like little little parts of what's going on to you. So there's again, it's it's not this monstrous spoiler where the camera moves back and shows everything that's happening to you. Again, you're only you could only see what or let me rephrase that. You can only see what your eyes can see. So, I, so I really like that. They did a good job on the first person. So it's it's like I said yesterday. It's like I like everything about this game, except probably for the actual gameplay itself. Like I said, it just it just um, recycled, rerun puzzle adventure, and um, there's actually some first person. There's actually some first-person shooting in there as well, which, again, I'm not... I don't get into much, except maybe Doom. Like, the original classic Doom. That's about as far as I go. But, yeah, but, um... Def uh, definitely watch that. Um, I might go back and then watch the rest of the uh, original gameplay video. But again, it turned into a... I left off right around the time it turned into a first-person shooter. You know, you can, like, lock and load a... You can lock and load a rifle for the, the scoring equivalent of a rifle. You, you got to run around and shoot monsters and all that. I just started losing interest after that. You know, it just... I guess probably Clockwork Orange build up from seeing so much of that throughout the years. You know... Halo, Fortnite, you know, that kind of thing. And then, um, something else, uh, it, I actually thought of doing, I kind of thought of doing this while putting this cast together. Um, I actually, uh, looked up a YouTube video in the, uh, the Art of HR Geiger. Like, holy shit, this guy goes, this guy goes way back. Like, I think he was, uh, he was creating this kind of shit long before Alien came out. Like, the, uh, the original Alien movie. You know, and, um, I caught a little glimpse of one of his interviews, but I didn't have time to, I didn't have time to sit down and watch because I needed to get going on this cast, but he mentioned something about E.T. So I think he, I think he might have had a hand in that movie, too. But, but like I said, um, after checking out this video, I think, uh, he goes way back. I think it was, um, I want to say he was born, like, the 30s or 40s or something, and he's been drawing this kind of artwork back then. So, yeah. Yeah, this guy is a freaking legend. But, um, but yeah, like I said, um, I'll probably, uh, watch the rest of the, watch that other scoring video. Um, I might check out, might do a little more research on Geiger. Uh, might, uh, check out some of his artwork and maybe... If I could somehow swing it, I don't see it happening, but I'll see what I can do. Because um, again, like like I said in one of my other cast videos, my apartment complex is no longer allowing uh, like people from Amazon, UPS, FedEx. They're no longer allowing these people into the complex anymore. And the landlady is no longer accepting packages. So you gotta play phone tag now with these people. You have, either you have to be there to pick it up, or it's just gonna probably get left, get left on the front door or something. But, it, but anyway, anyway. But if I could somehow make it work, maybe I'll, maybe I'll order one of his art books online. Um, I did that with M.C. Escher, probably my all-time favorite artist. I've got like, I mean, I think back when I first moved into his apart, into this apartment, I got a bunch of his posters on my wall right now. Um, I've got uh, one or two of his art books in in my closet someplace. I might do the same with Geiger too. Like, but like I said, I gotta 
I gotta figure it out, figure out a way to swing it though. So I gotta find a way to make it work. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say today. So, so yeah. Uh, but thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, but until then, thanks again, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time.